Yes, congratulations. The arrival of little Ella Claire born this week. Absolutely, congratulations, Tommy, Kristen. Enjoy your wonderful little bundle of love. Back home in South Carolina, that's where Josie is now. And Bill O'Neill's right here in Council Bluffs, Iowa, as he gets some help and strikes on his first ball on his first ever TV final. We had the last time we had two non-titleists meet in the championship match, 2004 Japan Cup. That was Tommy Jones' victory there. His first victory. Mm -hmm. He's been red hot, of course, since. The last time on ESPN, 2002 Greater Casey Classic. Michael Gaither, Patrick Healy Jr. And Patrick won that one. 243-227. It's been a while. Late help number seven, down for Machuga. Bring us to the final ace hardware matchup of the day, Mr. Peters. A matchup of two non-winners on the PBA Tour. The rookie, Billy O'Neill, Mike Machuga with all the experience. And remember, he's been in the title match now for a fourth time. So you would think advantage Mike Machuga, but Bill O'Neill's got a lot of heart and a lot of game. saw that statistic a moment ago. Walter Williams Jr., Brian Voss, Robert Smith are the three who have knocked off Mike Machuga. And he does have a fan club here. They have been rooting hard for him all day long. And he starts off with a double. We are going to have a new winner today, regardless of who wins this match. And that is going to knock out Doug Kent from the Dexter Tournament of Champions. He was on the bubble. Bill didn't like that much off when he's did he? But a nice result. Well, when you let go of it, you go, oh, God, and then it ends up dead flush. That's a good sign. Normally, when I yell, oh, God, after I let go of it, I get six with a real ugly design. Like a couple over here, a couple over there. You've had your run of success, too, partner. 13 titles, not bad. <laughs> well, thanks, Dave. They call this guy the real deal. Red Hot Rookie. Tough break on a split. Yikes. 210. Wow. And he left a 2 8 10 on that same lane against Wes Mallott. <laughs> Was fortunate enough to win, but watch this ball gets down lane and just never grabs hold. Needs to slide the two over into the 10. Just misses. An open frame early for Bill O'Neill. The deal is what he has to do on that left lane is he either has to move in and get softer and get the ball to go further to the right to pick up that dry, uh, the dry part of the lane, or he's got to move a little bit right and square up on that lane. Last saw Mike Machuga on TV last year. Mace, Arizona lost in the semifinal to the eventual champ, Kikoi Bunemi. 192-177. Perfect shot. And that appearance was the second straight TV show made by Machuga, but he hasn't been on since. And now he's in great shape. A turkey to start. Well, he really liked that shot there. It ended up dead flush. And if you ever want to win your first title, it's not it, you don't really want to have to go up against a Walter Ray Williams Jr. or Norm Duke or Brian Voss mm -hmm. or Parker Bone, Jason Couch. You want to win it against a guy who's never won before because Mike Machuga has been here in this situation. Bill O'Neill has not. What a start, Machuga, the front four. O'Neill's down 34. Perfect shot. Clears the deck in his fourth frame. Despite being from Philly, and this is blasphemy for a lot of Philly people, he's not an Eagles fan. He roots for the, brace yourself, Redskins. <laughs> Told us last night he and Jason Couches, Bill's dad watches. He knows who Bill roots for on football field. Jason Couch, a big Skins fan. They watched the win over the Eagles last week. Oh! Oh! And his dad loves it. The atomic messenger. Atomic messenger. That thing came flying across. You know, he credits his father and his grandfather for all of his bowling accomplishments and why he's at the skill level he's at, as you see that head pin 
coming across and absolutely wiping out the 10. So his dad, his grandpa, his uncle, all very good bowlers, very competitive bowlers. Really got into it just before high school. The two guy gets a late tap on number seven. With an answer of his own, the front five. Semi-final number one, watch how much straighter Mike Machigo is going, his hand staying behind the ball, up the board, we call that up the boards. Now, he didn't like that, so he moves way in, another 10 or 15 boards, gets his hand to circle around the side of the ball, brings his ball speed down, goes from going really straight to circling. Randy, it's the Motel 6, sixth frame. He's throwing the front five with a strike here, he'll earn $600 from Motel 6, the official lodging partner of the PBA, instead of Swift. That's the thing now, you heard him say he caught all that one. When you're looping it like that, you catch a little bit too much of it. The ball speed comes down, makes the ball break real sharp. Of course, he pays the price, leaving the 4-9. Four, the four Get the ball to the left side of the four pin, slide it over into the nine to stay clean. The door is open for Bill O'Neill. Opens even further. The nine pin stands open frame. Can O'Neill take advantage? Well, we're going to find out here in a minute, but with two more strikes, Bill O'Neill will tie this match. Joel told us he worked hard in the offseason, lost about 20 pounds, worked out with the weights, a lot of running to be in shape for the end of the tournament, mentally and physically, for moments just like this. No. Nine pin. Boy, that was his opening, too. That was his, his chance to get back in this match. Again, we talked about it earlier, the transition. This ball looks pretty good. Maybe a pinch to the right. It overhooks. And he knows, man, I needed that. I needed that. Spare here and strike in the seventh. You still got a chance. Takes care of his nine pin, gets his mark, but that strike would have been huge. Out of the seventh frame for the rookie. The PBA's newly redesigned website, PBA.com, features an online store where you can purchase the newest PBA apparel and merchandise. PBA.com remains your best source for all the latest PBA news, including information about the Chris Barnes Youth Scholarship Tournament. Go to PBA.com and search Chris Barnes for all the details. All 10 down the pit for Bill O'Neill. When you see the six pin go to the sidewall and cut the 10 out, that's really a good sign that your ball is entering the pocket the right way. It's been a long time. He has waited. Mike told us last night. Wes Malak got his first title. Bill O'Neill's bowled well. I want to win my first title. It's my turn. My time. Ten pin. Remember when I said the six pin goes to the sidewall and carves the ten out? That sh that's telling you that your ball is entering the pocket the right way. This is exactly the opposite. This ball is going to enter flat. The six goes to the sidewall and lays dead in the gutter. That's all about revolutions and entry angle. Mike can have a moment of fun with the crowd here. Does have a 21 pin lead. But O'Neill in his eighth frame will be working on a strike. Well, I guarantee you, if Mike doesn't strike in the eighth frame and O'Neill gets up and throws two more for a three bagger, Machuga's not going to be talking a whole lot. Takes care of his mark. Tolis, he has felt focused in a great place mentally. So comfortable in. These surroundings in Council Bluffs where he's had success before. So what if he wins here, key to the city? I think so. <laughs> the former Husker. Twice at Thunder Bowls, made the finals. Can he win here? 
Mas Bueno. O'Neal down 21 pins. Does work on a strike. Cut it to 11, as Randy said. Eight frame strike here. Foundation frame strike in the ninth. We've got ourselves a brand new ball game. Just one. Dave, in my opinion right now, in order for Bill O'Neill to win this tournament, he must strike out 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th. Beautiful shot here. He makes the adjustment, doesn't get it quite as far right, keeps his hand underneath the back, and you think his father knows what the score is? Absolutely. That's a man who's done a lot of bowling over the years and who's instilled great values and a great game. Not only is Bill O'Neill a great bowler, but he's a great young man on and off the lanes. Big shot. We heard those very words from West Malott last week against Mika Kovanemi, who forced Major Mika to double the tent. Mika could not do it. West had his first title. Maybe the same happens today. Right. A great shot thrown there. Now, here's the deal. If Mike Machuga does not strike in the ninth frame, Bill O'Neill can strike out and win this tournament. Mike Machuga must strike in the ninth, tenth, and eleventh to shut out Bill O'Neill. Turkey for O'Neill. Win seven through nine. Wow. Puts the pressure right back on Machuga's shoulders. Huge shot. Well, that set up his 10th frame. Well, all that's left for Mike Machuga to do to win his first ever career title is two strikes and two pins in the 10th frame. Anything less, Bill O'Neill still has a chance to win his first ever tournament. Machuga, is he ever coming up in? Machuga has done it. It'll be his first ever Denny's PBA Tour title. Takes off his mic. Wants to be sure that everything will be perfectly in order to get these last pins, and it is a done deal. Mike Machuga has won his first ever title. Look at this! <laughs> now remember, that's not a foul because he didn't let go of it. He did it on TV, folks! That's gotta hurt. I can't believe it! He promised if he'd ever win on TV, he would try that move. Let's see. Oh my goodness! I want to see that again in slow-mo. That is going to make SportsCenter tonight. 